Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? He worked out uh, pretty good for us, moved around really well. He's been a, a productive player in our league uh, at an off the ball uh, position. So we felt like he was somebody we'd like to bring into the mix, have him come in and compete and see where we're at. Uh, that was Dennis Allen on the Saints' decision to assign linebacker Jalen Smith. Uh, Smith, we all know the story, was uh, an All American linebacker at Notre Dame, a magnificent player who. Uh, had the unfortunate injury, the knee injury in the Fiesta Bowl against Ohio State. Um, it dropped it, his draft stock. He fell out of round one. Dallas took him in round two. He basically sat his first year in the NFL while he rehabbed that knee, came back and was a very productive player for four years in Dallas. Ultimately spent uh, 2021 with the Packers and the Giants. Then last year uh, with the Giants earning a starting job. And to, after, being, uh, not, uh, after being released by the Giants and was looking for a new spot, Jalen Smith today was in the black and gold one day after signing with the New Orleans Saints. He was there in uniform, going through workouts in the dome with the team here uh, on the penultimate ultimate day before they open up the the preseason on Sunday against the Kansas City Chiefs at the dome. I am uh, I'm excited about Jalen Smith. I've been asked quite a bit: is uh, is this a situation where you think Smith comes in and is um, sort of the Batman to Demario Davis's Robin, like Quan Alexander was? And, and I don't think that's a, exactly a what and what. And here's why. Um, when First and foremost, Pete Werner is the starter opposite to Mario Davis. That, that's the thing that you've got to accept. The Saints used a second-round pick on Pete Werner. Uh, he has been the starter, and he has been a very, very productive player when he's been healthy. Uh, Pete Werner has been very good. His health has been his problem so far in his young NFL career. If he's healthy, that's... Fantastic. You've got a guy that's 24 years old that has been very productive during his time on the field. Uh, he had 92, uh, I forgive me, he had uh, 80 tackles a, a year ago in, um, in uh, I guess, somewhat limited action given the fact that he played just 12 games a season ago. As a rookie, had 62 tackles in 15 games. Last year, had 80 tackles in just 12 games. So you're talking about a very young a very productive player at 24 years old. If Werner's healthy, he's the starter. When the Saints brought in Quan in 2020, remember they traded for Quan. They traded a, a draft pick and Kiko Alonso to the 49ers for Quan Alexander, and they were trading for Quan to be a starter. And he was. And then he ruptured his Achilles on Christmas Day against the Minnesota Vikings. And the Saints did re-sign him the next year, and he was a starter again until he had the, the arm injury, which cost him a bulk of the season. So that's the big difference. You're not bringing in Jalen Smith to be the starter opposite to Mario Davis. You've got your starter. It's Pete Werner. You're bringing him in to be a productive backup, a veteran at 28 years old who's played a lot of football. That is a really good rotational guy as your number three and a potential starter if something happens to Werner or Davis. Mario Davis is battling a calf injury right now, so we should see a lot of of uh, Jalen Smith in the meantime. So that part of it is is exciting. Remember, he he beat out Alex Anzalone. Uh, Quan did. Beat out Alex Anzalone to start um, whenever the Saints brought him in and Anzalone was the number three. I would say look more at the role Alex Anzalone played in the defense in those years, and that's the role Jalen Smith would be asked to play in this defense for the New Orleans Saints. But I I love I love the signing. We'll get details on uh, you know particulars, but the money clearly worked out fine, and You've got a guy who's been a massively productive player throughout his career when he's been healthy and you know was really good last year for the Giants when he, they brought him in. He ended up beating out Tay Crowder and, and won the uh, won the starting job there. Ended up starting eleven games and you know it, starting in October and started in the postseason as well. So really like the uh, the Jalen Smith signing. Now what's interesting is that to bring in Jalen Smith, they released Kiki Kuti, uh, who's a wide receiver. Remember Kiki Kuti is, uh, was drafted. Um, by the Colts in round four. I'm sorry, drafted by the Texans. Forgive me. He was drafted by the Texans in 2018 in round four. So this was a guy that was thought highly enough to be a, an early day three draft pick in round four by the Texans. Um, in three years in Houston, 
was a, a serviceable player in 83 catches for 941 yards. You know, he went to the Colts and he played there in 10 games over the last two years um, and was also a, a special teamer as a punt returner. I liked bringing in Kiki Kuti to New Orleans because it gave you even more depth options at receiver. I don't think there was any certainty ever that he was going to win a job, but it spoke to the depth they have at receiver when a guy who was a high draft pick and who has played a lot of football is fighting to win a roster spot. Um, but I think more so what it shows you is you bring in a linebacker and you let a receiver go. Now, obviously, you're not letting a linebacker go. You brought in Jalen Smith because you needed depth and bodies at linebacker. But you look at the roster, you go, okay, where, where are we heavy? And that's where you cut. And so the Saints were looking at that and they said, okay, we're, we're heavy at receiver. And keep in mind, that's with Rashid Shahid being injured right now. We've gone over this, y'all. There's two, there are two stone cold lead pipe locks at receiver to make this team. Two. It's Chris Olave and Michael Thomas. They I fully anticipate Rashid Shahid's going to make the team. As much as it pains me to say it, Traquan Smith is likely going to make this team because they see a lot of value in him. Okay. But could someone have an awesome preseason camp, all that stuff, and win a roster spot? Absolutely. Could Brian Edwards do it? Could James Washington do it? Could A.T. Perry do it? Could one? Yeah, absolutely. So the fact that all this to say, Rashid Shahid's injured and not there right now. So you're down a body at receiver, and you still felt your depth was good enough there that you could let go a guy that's a former fourth-round pick who has been a productive receiver and returner in the NFL. Not a practice squad guy, not someone who did it at a small college, who's done it in the NFL. That should give you great confidence in that receiving room after your top two guys in Alave and Michael Thomas. By the way, Dennis Allen was asked when he met with reporters on Friday if at some point the... Uh, the injury to Rashid Sheed, the time he's missing becomes concerning. I'm not concerned at all. Um, you know, he's going through the rehab process. Um, you know, we're going to be smart with him. Um, but uh, I, I, I'm not concerned. Speaking of, uh, that's and that's great to hear as well. I mean, they, internally, they know it's it's a situation where they know what they got in the player. It's more important to have him ready to go for week one than ready to go for week one of the, of the preseason. Um, Dennis Allen did also run through the list of injuries and the veteran uh, rest days here on uh, on day 14 of camp. Landon Young went down at the end of practice there. Looks like it's an MCL sprain, um, but we'll obviously have to go through some evaluations to see exactly the significance of that. But um, that was the only injury of note uh, today with practice. Uh, we did have three guys, you know, Jimmy and, and Ram and Mike Thomas were all vet rest days. Um. I vet, veteran rest days are completely fine. There's absolutely no problem at all with that. I mean, it's it's camp. Your veterans don't need camp. Make sure they're healthy for the regular season. The um, the the injury to Landon Young is kind of the one to highlight there because I don't I don't know if you've looked at the at the depth chart, the unofficial depth chart that the Saints released, but you know they have Trevor Penning. Uh, Penning as the um, as the starter at left tackle, and they have Landon Young as the backup at left tackle. So, um, that's a little surprising, quite honestly, considering Hurst. Uh, they have Hurst, by the way, as the backup at left guard. Um, it's a it's a or Pete or Hurst at left guard, but the fact that they have Trevor Penning is the starter at left tackle and Landon Young is the backup at left tackle is notable because in a real in a real like game situation if Trevor Penning was starting at left tackle and had to go out my assumption is that Hurst would be the next guy in and we've also seen Pete play left tackle so losing Landon Young there is a little bit of a red flag so something to circle keep an eye on if the MCL injury is serious to Landon Young and cost him any any appreciable time um, <laughs> there. Our uh, old speaking of Trevor Penning, he was <laughs> he was back at it on the practice field, uh, feeling like himself again, throwing blows on the practice field on Friday. 
not the first fight that's ever happened in training camp, right? It's the first one we've had, uh, but it's not the first one that ever happens. And, you know, you hit on the same guy day in, day out, day in, day out. You know, eventually tempers kind of flare a little bit. And uh, we had a little dust up and we got it handled. And then we go back to practice. God, I hope Trevor Penning has an awesome year. He needs to. I mean, you you invested a lot of draft capital in him. I love the mean streak. That's never changed. He's just got to prove he can go out there and be an every down left tackle for you in the NFL. Great chance to start proving that uh, on Sunday in the Dome against Kansas City. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.